in this lecture let us talk about quantization error or quantization noise in the last lecture we discussed uh, pulse code modulation so in pulse code modulation you have the message signal m of t it is given to the sampler right at the output of sampler is given to a quantizer and this is given to an encoder so at the output of quantizer you are approximating the actual value because of that you are not transmitting the actual value but you are transmitting the approximate value so due to this there will be an error that's what we have discussed in the last lecture now in this lecture let us try to calculate the quantization error how much error we are making in this process so in doing this i will be using uh, the the simple set of you know definitions so once again so <clears throat> okay so let me draw one simple diagram mm. it is my starting point let's say x not then this is x1 x2 and uh, x3 okay so these are my uh, you know boundary <coughs> or limit and here x0 is the lower boundary and uh, x3 is the upper boundary okay so these are my solid lines so the solid lines denote the boundaries of uh, various quantization levels my signal may may vary like this like that so i'll do the sampling at this point let me do the sampling at this point i'll do the sampling here sampling here sampling here like that therefore this line indicates boundaries of various quantization levels okay here x not is going to be the lower boundary x3 is going to be the upper boundary okay now let me draw the dotted lines maybe use a green color this okay so this is middle uh, point middle point of this boundary lines like this let me call this is the middle point m1 m2 and m3 okay i have a, you know i have only got four levels let's say the four regions x0 x1 x2 x3 okay but you could have more but uh, for uh, simplicity i am taking only this four uh, boundaries and here m i that is m1 m2 and m3 represent the middle point middle point okay um middle point of the or midpoint of the ith interval let's assume that your uh, signal sample values which i am going to denote by capital x this capital x denote the uh, sample value At, i mean output of the sampler sample value which i am going to denote by x and this sample value has an excursion between this lower boundary and the upper boundary see my sample value can lie here it can lie here it can lie here even my signal goes like this 
so it can lie here or it may come down come down here come down like this it can come down like this so it may lie here therefore the sampled values are denoted by capital x i will tell you why we are taking this capital x so it can lie anywhere between x0 and x3 so let me call this lower limit as a and this upper limit as b therefore each sample coming out of the sampler which i am going to represent by capital x therefore capital x can take the maximum value of b and uh, minimum value of a so b is the maximum value of x capital x and therefore that will be represented by x3 that is uh, whatever is the largest or highest level that you have and uh, a is the minimum value of capital x and let's say there are uh, you know q number of uh, quantization intervals right so in the um, q number of quantization intervals and therefore each quantization interval is obviously equal to the highest value minus lowest value i'm sorry divided by q this is the interval length maybe let me delete this for uh, in order to explain <coughs> this is the interval length okay and this interval length is given by this file this guy in case if i have q number of intervals then you take the total width this width and divided by the q that will give the quantization interval so this is nothing but quantization interval let's say a is equal to minus 5 volts and b is equal to plus 5 volts then i want to take a uh, no five levels then what is the my interval length b minus a 5 minus minus 5 divided by 2 so 10 by 2 that is 5 i'm sorry 10 by 5 intervals then 10 by 5 which is 2 volts therefore this length in case this is going to be 2 volts in case if i make 5 but here i have only 3 so you divide by 3 that's it mm, let's say this is uh, plus 5 volt and this is uh, minus 5 volts then i want to make you know 5 quantization levels then you make like this 1 2 3 4 5 this width is going to be 2 volts this again 2 volts this again 2 volts this again 2 volts 2 volts like that so minus 5 then this is going to be minus 3 volt then minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 mm, am i correct yes 2 plus 2 4 has to come right minus 5 plus 2 minus 3 minus 3 plus 2 minus 1 1 plus 2 3 this is 3 volts that's it so like that you can divide so therefore here q is equal to 5 and uh, a value is minus 5 and the b value is plus 5 therefore this q is given by b minus a by sorry let me call this step size is delta and this delta is going to be b minus a by q so this is the formula by which you will calculate the quantization interval therefore here delta is equal to quantization interval interval and this is going to be b minus a by q so we are going to use this uh, framework for calculation of quantization error if the signal value happens to be mm, let me take this let me draw the fan diagram one more time mm, like this 
x0, x1, x2, x3 and the midpoint is this one m1, m2, m3 right in case if the signal value happens to be somewhere uh, let's say this point okay <clears throat> the level that will be assigned uh, to this point will be the middle point of m1 so this is mapped to m1 okay and therefore this much amount of error is introduced this much amount of error this is the amount of error introduced in this process I'll, uh, yeah this is the amount of error in this process okay so this is the amount of error that will be introduced in the process of representation in case if it happens to be here somewhere here and then this much amount of error will be introduced so we can see that the error that is going to going to be introduced okay um, is like you know random in nature okay sometimes it may fall here sometimes it may fall here sometimes it may fall here sometimes here sometimes here so the error is not constant right so this is a error and this is a error and this is error so the error is you known somewhat like random in nature it is not deterministic okay therefore depending on what the value of x turns out to be so the sampled value we said it is going to be denoted by capital x random variable that's why i put a capital x here to denote the sample value and um, let us assume that this is going to occur equally likely between positive and negative right here the error is you know this value minus that value so error is negative and here the error is positive right let's say this is uh, minus 5 volt and uh, um, this is minus 3 volt and minus 4 volt and this one is 4 minus 4.5 4.5 volts so the error is negative here uh, in case you can you know assume in some other way also just for uh, you know, clarity let me give positive values let's assume this is 0 1 2 volts like that now the actual values let's say 0.5 and the quantized value is 1 volt therefore 0.5 minus 1 is minus 0.5 volt error the error is negative here what about here let's say this is 0 0.7 1 1.7 and that 1.7 is rounded off to 1 so 1.7 minus 1 it is 0 0.7 volt this is positive error here so the error can be positive or negative so we will model this error to be some kind of random variable and then calculate what its mean square value is and that will give you some idea of the quantization error or quantization noise that is being introduced by the quantizer so that's the procedure we are going to follow so let us start this uh, computation so let's say the sample value is capital x and uh, this capital x is quantized right this is its sampled value the sampled value we are not transmitting as it is so the sampled value is given to the quantizer right the quantizer output let me denote by x cube okay what is xq xq is the quantized value okay and this quantized value is nothing but the midpoint of the interval look at this figure this is the actual value and this is quantized to this value so therefore this dotted line is the midline mi m1 and this is m2 and this one is m3 therefore the sampled value will lie anywhere but the uh, quantized value will take either m1 or m2 or m3 it will not take anything else therefore 
the quantized value is given by the midpoint of midpoint of of that interval where it lies okay that is x cube is equal to it takes the value m i right and uh, this m i <coughs> lies in the interval of x i suffix i minus 1 less than or equal to capital x less than or equal to small x i if you look at the interval here x0 and x1 in between m1 you have here x0 i can write as x0 minus 1 and x1 i can write x1 and here m1 so this is xi minus 1 and xi mi in between like this okay therefore mi is the midpoint of the interval in which capital x lies I could say that it is equal to mi if x lies in the interval xi minus 1 to xi because the middle point of the interval whose boundaries are x suffix i minus 1 and x suffix i. On the lower side you have x suffix i minus 1 and in the upper side I have xi. Okay and this is precisely equal to mi and that will be the quantized value of x which I am going to represent it by x suffix q. Now what is a quantization error? Actual value minus quantized value. What is the actual value? X. What is the quantized value? X suffix Q. Okay. So this is my quantization error. So this is X minus and this X Q, X Q will take any one of the values M1 or m2 or m3 and so on and so forth therefore let me put m suffix i okay so this is my quantization error see this all are you know very straightforward uh, you know procedure now this is a error now the next question is what is the quantization noise power quantization noise power how do you calculate the noise power first of all this error is in terms of you know uh, as a communication engineer we need to quantify it right so we need to know what is the unit of this either this guy is going to be in terms of voltage or current okay quantization error is in terms of voltage see the sampled value is voltage and this quantized value also voltage so voltage minus voltage is again it's going to be voltage so once you know the voltage then it's very easy to calculate the power from ohm's law we know the voltage times current is power or voltage square divided by r is equal to power or i square times r is equal to power now in all this case let us assume the resistance is, resistance is normalized to one ohm therefore power is i square and here power is v square okay so therefore here quantization noise power is given by in terms of this uh, quantization error square right quantization error whole square if it is deterministic then this formula is correct right this formula is correct but this error is not deterministic it is random therefore i cannot use this formula so this formula is wrong so i need to modify the formula how can i do that whenever you find this kind of randomness then you take expected value of the quantization error what is the quantization error x minus x q whole square like this okay this is my noise power so you are familiar with this kind of operations okay capital x is being used to denote the random variable random variable where x is capital x is the actual value actual value means actual sampled value original value that uh, they will take okay and that will be denoted by 
um, random variable capital X. So what the actual value takes that is denoted by small value where capital X is a random variable takes different values right that that is denoted by small x. Therefore we know the formula integral of x minus x of x cube whole square the density function fx of x times dx. This is the um, let me give some number for this guys. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Quantization error, where is it? Mm, yeah. Let me call this as equation number one, quantization error. And this quantization nice power, let me call equation number two. And this is three, like that. where uh, what is fx of x it is the probability density function pdf of the random variable capital x okay where capital x is the sampled value at the sampling instant now we have to evaluate this integral okay now i did not put the limit here we will uh, put uh, a little later Okay, mm. now I'm going to rewrite this equation number three as uh, you know integral of uh, you know as the sum of q integra in, in integrals because the total integration range of course is going to from you know a to b the lower limit is a and the upper limit is b right because the random variable is going to lie between minus a between a to b therefore I can put a to b x minus x cube the whole square fx of x into dx i can write like that but you when whenever you have an integral like a to b then you can break this integral into two integrals if you know this limit let's say this is a uh, a uh, let's say this point is c and this point is b so integral of a to c is the same as integral of a to b plus integral of b to c right so in a similar fashion we are going to break this integral into sub integrals various sub integrals okay so therefore i have you know um, q number of intervals okay where q is equal to um, b minus a dot b delta delta is the interval length so q number of intervals if you look at here look at this figure okay mm, maybe take this figure this will be much better yeah look at here how many intervals minus 5 and plus 5 1 2 3 4 5 right so this is my delta so the entire range from a to b instead of writing integral of a to b i can write as follows this is x0 x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 right so this whole in integration a to b can be written as a is nothing but x0 so x0 to x1 plus x1 to x2 plus x3 to x4 plus integral of x oh my god mm, yeah it has gone okay so this integral a to b i can write x naught to x1 plus integral of x1 to x2 plus uh, x3 sorry x2 to x3 plus x3 to x4 plus x4 to x5 so how many sub integrals 1 2 3 4 5 integrals so the single integral from the limit from a to b is you no know, yeah, is divided into or uh, made into sub integrals 
okay so instead of writing this many phi integrals i can put summation like that so i is equal to 1 to q integral of x suffix i minus 1 to x i right so same trick we are going to follow here also here in in this a to b i can write as summation of i is equal to 1 to q integral of x i suffix minus 1 to x i here x minus x q right this x q is nothing but some quantized value that is given by m i the whole square f x of x times dx so let me call this as equation number 4 actually we will be interested in computing the signal to noise ratio that comes out of the pulse code modulation quantizer so this is my noise power quantization noise power or error power quantization noise power but we will be interested in signal to noise ratio of pcm in order to calculate signal to noise ratio we need two quantity right one is signal power and another one is noise power so noise power we already got this ex got through this expression now our next job is to calculate the signal power therefore let us do the do a similar exercise for uh, the signal itself okay now let's look at the signal power available to you at the quantizer output so that will be obviously equal to expected value of x q square x is the actual value this is given to the quantizer and output is x q and what is this signal value yes or no signal value signal value in volt or current therefore signal value is x q i need signal power signal power is straight away i can write x q squared but again this x is a random variable and this x q also a random variable so i cannot write this formula we know power is equal to voltage square or current square if r is equal to 1 ohm resistance equal to 1 ohm so the same formula i cannot use it here wrong because of the randomness therefore instead of writing x suffix q squared i can write expected value of x suffix q squared so that's how the random process random variables and the probability theory is coming into the picture therefore signal power at uh, quantizer output is equal to expected value of capital X suffix Q squared and now you know the formula so this is going to be x suffix q squared the density function times dx and the interval is a to b again by the same token this is going to be summation of i is equal to 1 to q i am breaking this into sub integral 1 to q yeah. um, and this x q is a mi right midpoint so integral of x i minus 1 to x i m i square f x of x into dx now let me call this signal power as x suffix q capital s suffix q and the noise power let us call uh, capital n suffix q therefore now we got a signal power and noise power right so what is a snr sq divided by nq this is my signal to noise ratio compute signal power and compute noise power using these two integrals and then you'll get a signal to noise ratio and the signal to noise ratio is very important because it gives you the fidelity of the quantizer or fidelity of the PCM system.
therefore this is the measure of fidelity okay so we need to compute this snr so that we can so that we get some kind of uh, measure of fidelity of this representation so this is a useful measure of fidelity how good the representation coming out of the quantization quantizer is that is given by this signal to quantization noise ratio instead of calling it snr let me call it as qnr signal to quantization noise ratio now the larger the sqnr or the better your fidelity that means the more accurate uh, your representation okay or less the amount of noise okay if sqnr is very high then that means what more accurate your representation is or less the amount of noise that is being added due to the quantization process okay here fidelity means the uh, quality of being accurate how accurate your quantizer is being accurate now you may ask a question okay instead of finding the power uh, you know signal power straight away from the x we are finding the power from xq will there be any difference between this and that if you found the power from this guy and find the power from this guy then will there be any difference of course there will be some difference but the difference will be more or less very very you know small okay if you find the expected value of xq squared then this is the signal power at the quantizer output if you get a e of x squared this is the actual power so definitely there will be some you know difference but uh, the difference is not so far away okay so the power in the quantized signal might be not far from the original signal this is the original power and this is the quantized signal power original signal power or i can say actual signal power and this is quantized signal power and we are not taking the you know actual signal power but we are taking the quantized signal power okay but anyway uh, the difference is not far from the uh, original signal okay it will be close to it but in any case uh, this quantized signal power is the one which is of interest to us because we want to find out the uh, signal to quantization noise ratio at the output of quantizer actually sampler is not doing any uh, you know error here only the quantizer is doing that's why we are we are interested in finding out the signal to quantization noise ratio okay so in any case uh, since usually this uh, let me denote this yes and yes q in any case since usually yes and yes q are going to be so close to each other that it doesn't matter very much because the number of quantization levels typically is going to be reasonably large so this question is only of uh, academic interest so practically no need to consider uh, the difference between yes and uh, yes q but nevertheless what i am holding still is that uh, it is uh, this power yes q <coughs> which the receiver is going to look at ultimately and therefore the snr that is of interest to us should involve the quantized signal and not the unquantized signal unquantized signal signal unquantized signal power and in any, and in any case there is not going to be much difference between the quantized signal power and uh, unquantized signal power because we are assuming that the approximation is going to be reasonably good so we are assuming that noise power is still going to be typically much smaller than the signal power otherwise no there is no use of using this uh, technique if noise power dominates then nobody uses this technique 
Now to proceed further, we have to make uh, some assumptions regarding the nature of the signal itself. In order to evaluate this integration, we need to know what is this fx of x. So let us try to find out what is the density function. Okay, and moreover, the signal power and the noise power will turn out to be different for uh, different kinds of signals. For voice signal, it behaves in one way. For picture signal, it behaves in one way. For some other signal, it behaves in some other way. So we must appreciate that. In fact, strictly speaking, even the nature of the quantizer that I use should be dependent on what kind of signal I have. You cannot use the same quantizer for all other, for every signals. Okay, the kind of quantizer that we are looking at right now is called a uniform quantizer. I will tell you why is it called a uniform quantizer. Okay, it is called a uniform quantizer because the quantization intervals is same across the whole interval. Okay, so if you look at the figure, the delta is constant. Hmm. Where is the figure? Yeah, it's here. If I take this one. Oh my God. Yeah. If you look at this interval is the same as this interval. So the interval length delta is uniformly distributed across the range from A to B. The interval length is not changed. It is uniform across the length. That is why this is called a uniform quantizer. Okay, so, in the, so one more quantizer we have that is called a non-uniform quantizer that we will discuss a little later, not now. Okay, let us assume uniform quantizer and try to evaluate how much uh, signal to noise quantization noise ratio that we can achieve. Okay, so uniform quantizer means delta is constant across the range from minimum value to maximum value. It doesn't depend on the interval, which interval, okay? That is the ith interval. So each of the interval has step size of delta independent of the location or independent of small i. i. What is i? i is the interval uh, location, first interval, second interval, third interval and so on. So this kind of uniform quantizer is actually designed on the assumption that your density function of the signal is actually uniform over the range of values. But practically this will not happen. Therefore, let us consider a case that is a simple case that uh, when we assume that fx of x corresponds to a uniform distribution function. So we will take the case of um, you know uniform distribution and uh, complete the computation so uniform quantizer then let us assume that your interval is a comma b lower interval is b and upper interval is sorry lower interval is a and the upper interval is b so i am going to simplify this lower and upper interval between let's say this a i am going to replace by minus a and b i am going to replace by plus a I am making it symmetrical. Okay, your low, lower limit is minus a, upper limit is plus a, and I am assuming it to be symmetrical. Therefore, based on the uniform distribution assumption, your fx of x is going to be, you can easily find it, right? 1 by upper limit minus of minus lower limit because your density function is going to be 1. So, 1 by 2a. So, this is minus a and this is plus a so the, this is the range if you integrate over the interval then you'll, the total area must be 1 so that is why 2a and integral um, if you integrate this from a to minus a to plus a then you'll get 1 right minus a to plus a fx of x into dx must be 1 so that is why I have chosen this 1 by 2a 
okay so therefore based on the uniform distribution assumption your fx of x is going to be 1 over 2a One over two a, where x lies between minus a less than or equal to x less than or equal to plus a, and zero elsewhere. So based on this, uh, you know, density function, let us compute the noise power. N suffix q is equal to summation of i is equal to one to q integral of x of x i minus 1 to x i x minus x i the whole squared f x of x f x of x is 1 over 2 a times dx now evaluate this integral then you will get the noise power now we know that x i can be replaced by the middle point midpoint of the interval m i so summation i is equal to 1 to q x of x i minus 1 to x i x minus m i the whole square 1 over 2 a so that 1 over 2 a you can bring out of the integration because it is constant i can put a 1 over 2 a and dx now how do you evaluate this integral so what is x of x <coughs> one second like this this is x0 x1 x2 and so on so forth and this x0 we assumed minus a and uh, let's say this x3 is we assumed plus a and this is my midpoint right m1 what is m1 m1 is the midpoint of the first interval right and this interval is delta okay and in this interval i is equal to 1 and in this interval i is equal to 2 and in this interval i is equal to 3 <coughs> so m1 is given by x1 plus x0 by am i correct midpoint right so i i am not supposed to put a delta i am supposed to put 2 mi what is m2 m2 is x2 plus x1 by 2 so similarly m3 i can write m3 is equal to x3 plus x2 by 2 therefore in general for mi i can write xi plus x of x i minus 1 by 2 am i correct yes xi plus x of x i minus 1 by 2 now what is x not lower limit minus a right so what is x1 x1 is equal to x0 plus delta right i can i can write like this x1 is equal to x0 plus delta uh, what is x2 x2 is equal to x1 plus delta what is x1 x0 plus delta again one more delta this delta so this is x0 plus 2 delta x2 similarly you can calculate x3 x3 is equal to x2 plus delta this is x3 sorry um, x0 plus 3 delta x3 is equal to x0 plus 3 delta so x0 is equal to x0 plus 0 delta 0 times delta like this i can write so from this in general i can write um, x suffix i 
is what is by the way what is a not x not x not is minus a right minus a plus 2 delta this is minus a and this also minus a plus 3 delta therefore in general see the suffix is 3 here and here also 3 times delta right and here the suffix is 2 and here also you have 2 similarly x1 is equal to x0 plus delta x0 is minus a plus delta x suffix 1 the suffix is 1 and here also you are multiplying by 1 1 times delta is same as 1 so by looking at this we can generalize if the suffix is 3 then you are multiplying by 3 suffix is 2 you are multiplying by 2 here therefore in general i can write x i is equal to minus a times i delta if you subtract 1 by i then x suffix i minus 1 is equal to minus a plus i minus 1 times delta okay so finally i can write these three things so x i is equal to minus a plus i delta x suffix i minus 1 is equal to minus a plus i minus 1 times delta and what about mi mi is the midpoint of the interval so x suffix i minus 1 plus x i divided by 2 okay why why did i put 2 because the midpoint of the interval so if you do this computation and substitute uh, you know here this is what you'll get so you can uh, you know substitute xi value and uh, xi minus value in this one let's say this is a and this is b and this is c substitute a and b and c you'll get mi is equal to minus a plus i delta minus delta by 2 you can do you can work on it you'll get it okay this is what you get <clears throat> that's all now i'll come back to this integration so here summation of i is equal to 1 to q 1 by 2a x suffix i minus 1 i know minus a plus i minus 1 times delta lower limit and the upper limit is xi xi is equal to minus a plus i delta here Mm. x minus mi so mi value you know substitute the mi value here what is this one minus a plus i delta minus delta by 2 so substitute here minus of minus a plus i delta minus delta by 2 dx So this is summation of 1 to q 1 by 2 a integral of x plus a minus i delta plus delta by 2 by the this whole square. <coughs> okay. Times uh, dx. And the lower limit is minus a plus uh, i minus 1 times delta and the upper limit is minus a plus i delta now change the limit it turns out to be a very simple integral for example let's assume y is equal to this whole thing as follows y is equal to x plus a minus i delta plus delta by 2 okay and then change the uh, lower limit and upper limit accordingly if y is equal to this much then what is the lower limit lower limit when x is equal to minus a minus a plus 
i minus 1 times delta then what is your y Just substitute this guy in this place minus a plus i minus 1 times delta plus a minus i delta plus delta by 2 you simplify this then you'll get a minus delta by 2 y is equal to minus delta by 2 this is the lower limit similarly you can find out the upper limit when x is, what is upper limit upper limit is minus a plus i delta so y is equal to x plus a minus i delta plus delta by 2 substitute in this place minus a plus i delta plus a minus i delta plus delta by 2 minus a plus a get cancelled this and that will get cancelled so you'll get a delta by 2 so this is the upper limit so now it's very compact now <coughs> okay change the limits then it turns out to be a very simple integral so integral of minus delta by 2 plus delta by 2 and here it is y squared am i doing correctly yes y squared times yeah now this is y where is it yeah what is dy dy is equal to dx a is constant and delta is constant and again delta by 2 is constant therefore dy is equal to dx dx and here 1 over 2 a and summation of i is equal to 1 to q this is n sub x q now do this integration y squared becomes y q by 3 substitute the upper limit lower limit and uh, all those things you will get a summation of i is equal to 1 to q 1 over 2 a then this is delta q divided by 12 so this is what i will get it now again we need to simplify this So this is going to be see q number of uh, you know the summation contains the upper limit is q therefore q times this guy 1 by 2 a times delta q by 12 okay now those little modifications here uh, um, I can write this delta cube as delta times delta squared then q times delta by 2a delta squared over 12 like that i can write q delta what is q delta q delta is your total range the upper limit is plus a and the lower limit is minus a and in between i have q number of intervals therefore this q is upper limit minus lower limit divided by delta so q delta is equal to 2a right therefore this 2a and that q delta will get cancelled therefore you will get delta square over 12 this is my noise power of the uniform quantization uniform quantizer okay so here this q delta is the total length of the interval here the total length is 2a therefore you will get delta squared over 12 it is a very simple neat expression for the quantization error okay so you get a very nice closed form expression Closed form expression for n sub x cube. Similarly, coming out coming to 
signal power quantized signal power let us try to calculate sq sq is equal to again summation of i is equal to 1 2 q then here this is going to be m i squared integral of it's a constant right so that's why brought out of the integration fx of x dx limit is x of x i minus 1 to x i and dx and this is again 1 by 2 a dx okay and uh, upper limit is x i and the lower limit is x i minus 1 is equal to 1 to q m i squared 1 by 2 a and integration of dx is x and substitute the limit upper limit is x i minus lower limit is x i minus 1 what is this this is the width of the interval or quantization interval size so this is equal to delta therefore summation of m i squared 1 by 2 a times delta 1 to q now delta by 2 a you got it now again this is a very simple summation once you simplify this then this is going to be q squared minus 1 by 12 times delta squared okay this is my signal power and previously we have calculated a noise power delta square over 12 now signal to quantization noise ratio is signal power divided by noise power which is equal to um, q square minus 1 divided by 12 times delta square all divided by delta square over 12 this and that will get cancelled so q squared minus 1 approximately you can say q squared okay so signal power divided by noise power quantization noise power is roughly q squared so we now get a very nice simple expression for quantization signal to noise ratio and assume that q is a sufficiently large number okay q is a sufficiently large number and um, which it is going to be in typical applications it is really of the order of you know q squared where if q is taken to be much larger uh, than quantity typically 128 in typical applications we will take 128 or 256 then q squared becomes 256 squared it's a very big number so in such a case i can um, you know I can remove I no need to consider this one okay I can approximate as q square okay therefore therefore the signal to noise ratio is given by this expression q squared normally we talk about uh, SNR in decibels okay and this is power actually okay it is not in terms of voltage or current okay it is not signal to uh, noise voltage ratio or current ratio it is the power ratio so we take 10 log in both sides so signal power divided by noise power in db is 10 log to the base 10 q square this is 20 log of q okay 20 log to the base 10 q so these are the two main results one is the result for sqnr and the other is in terms of db in terms of db which equivalently sometimes is just given in the form of fact that rms error so the rms error that you may get you may expect is delta times rho 12 q is you know noise power noise power is delta I'm sorry noise power is equal to 
delta square by 12 so rms noise power root mean square noise power is delta by root of 12 sometimes you will be asked this also so this is important result and this also an important result these are the two important results to remember for uh, uniform quantizer characteristics okay so i have taken 10 log here to convert into db okay so 20 log if you are not talking of voltage ratios or current ratios but when you are talking about a power ratio then you have to take 10 log and this result can also be made slightly more interesting into a yeah, rule of thumb rule of thumb kind of result okay so if you remember q is a power of 2 right q generally we have taken as 2 to the power n yes or no so then this result will become 20 log of q is 2 to the power n and base 10 so this is 20 n log base to the 2 so this is 6 n right so signal to quantization noise ratio in terms of db is equal to 6 times n so that is a very uh, interesting result okay very interesting result this is why is it very interesting because it gives you a very simple rule of thumb for calculating how much snr you are going to get in dbs depending on the number of levels you use if you use for example number of levels corresponding to 7 bits then you can multiply 7 6 7 sir okay so this is going to be 42 db which is very good usually for voice communication we use a snr between 40 db to 50 db so n is equal to 7 is a uh, uh, is good enough okay so 7 to 8 bits are adequate for representing voice signals in pcm But uh, the number of levels that we are talking about is 128 to 256. In case if n is equal to 7, then how many quantization levels? Q is equal to 2 to the 7. 2 to the 7 means how much? 128. Sixteen two power five thirty two right two power six sixty four yes two power seven is um, one twenty eight two power eight two fifty six yes two power nine five one two that's it I'm right okay so this is two power seven is one twenty eight levels so for speech. 8 to 16 levels okay so if you use 8 to 16 levels how many bits you need 8 level means 3 bits and 16 level means 4 bits if you use 8 levels 8 levels to 16 levels you'll get intelligibility intelligible but uh, poor quality so very very poor quality you'll get so much a lot of noise will be there but if you use 128 to 256 levels, 128 means 7 bits, 256 means 8 bits, then you'll get telephone quality speech. Okay, so for speech, if you use 8 to 16 levels, which will correspond to 
like uh, three bits to four bits but the quality is quite poor but the intelligibility is very good no problem you can understand but the quality is not good so you get a uh, quite intelligible speech but a poor quality if you use 8 to 16 levels okay that means you will also hear a lot of distortion along with the information distortion or hissing sound something like that okay lot of distortion along with the information but uh, if you use 128 to 256 levels it is it will give you quite good quality what we call telephone quality speech very rarely we use 8 to 16 levels it is just to give you some information as to how many levels are necessary if you use these many levels you lose a lot of quality okay if you use 8 to 16 levels you will lose a lot of quality because both are no important not only intelligibility but also quality intelligibility alone is not sufficient okay because you'll get irritation so usually in most pcm commercial uh, uh, you know pcm systems that you use you have actually an 8-bit representation 8-bit representation means 256 levels so q is equal to 256 levels we are using commercial applications okay so that's all about uh, uniform quantization and uh, signal to noise ratio of uniform quantizer okay and it makes sense to use uniform quantization provided that you have a reasonable basis to say that your signal is of the kind where its values are uniformly distributed over the certain interval if you take typical voice signal it, it varies like this okay let's say this is a uh, no v v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 and v6 now if you look at the waveform very rarely this voltage is going to occur if somebody is you now shouting then this point will occur otherwise most of the time your voice voltage or voice signal voltage lies in the lower amplitude range okay see you know that most of your signal values are going to lie in a small range and the larger values are going to be much less frequent to occur yeah really if somebody is shouting screaming and yelling then this value will occur otherwise most of the times your voice signal voltage is lying in the lower amplitude range so in that case it is useless to you know go for a uniform quantizer whatever the you know bits you are allocating for v5 v6 v7 are useless anyway are not going to use it you are you are going to use it once in a while in that case why are we you know allocating so many number of bits and you are wasting your resources okay therefore the probability of having larger values of the signal is small probability of larger values of the signal is small okay let's say just for the sake of uh, assumption okay we will assume this uh, condition probability of having larger values of the signal is small then intuitively you may feel that uniform quantization process may not be a good idea to carry out because you are going to waste a large number of levels in the in a larger voltage region where the signal has a very low probability of occurring anyway and you are wasting your number of quantization levels also where the signal is not occurring therefore given a number of quantization levels it makes sense to make them more finely distributed in that region where the signal is likely to take values let me draw one more time like this what you do is instead of making uniform quantization like this uniform quantization like that what you do is don't do like that you make um, this is uniform quantization right uniform quantization now what you do is instead of doing this kind of uniform 
quantization like this you make this lines are very closer like this very denser lines here make more number of quantization intervals where the signals are occurring very frequently for uh, and if the signal is not occurring then make it bigger uh, intervals okay and this is bigger intervals you can make little bigger in fact like this okay and this is let's say delta 2 and uh, delta 1 and these are delta 0 so here delta 0 is less than delta 1 delta 1 is less than delta 2 that means what wherever the signal is occurring more frequently there you allocate more number of quantization intervals that means you are reducing the interval width here it is going to occur anyway it is going to occur very rarely therefore increase the interval size so that if you increase more number of quantization intervals then what is going to happen your noise power is going to come down that is the whole idea of this non-uniform quantizer here anyway you will get error this error is once in a while but here you are going to make lot of error but the moment you make more number of you know um, quantization intervals then this error will come down drastically so that's a whole idea of you know making this kind of non-uniform quantizer so practically uniform quantizer is not used okay so we will use non-uniform quantization therefore the uniform quantization is not a good idea to work with if your signal is known not to have uniform distribution see my signal does not have does not have uniform quantization uniform distribution if the signal does not have uniform quantization uniform distribution then it is useless to employ uniform quantizer okay and then you go for what is called a non-uniform quantization so basically what we are going to um, discuss in the next lecture is non-uniform quantization okay that means the idea is not not to use a uniform step size across the whole interval this is my whole interval right so in the whole interval i am not going to employ uniform quantizer but use a variable step size here the step size is different and here the step size is different i will use a different step size depending on the uh, distribution of my voice signal or my analog signal so that's the whole concrete idea of uh, you know um, non-uniform quantizer okay so that we will discuss in the next lecture thank you very much